Hey, good evening everybody. Tonight I'm going to show you how to make chicken penne alfredo. Um, I've made this dish before. I, you know, I kind of figured it's fairly popular, so I don't know if I should. But when I see it in the deli case in the home meal replacement, uh, it occurred to me that there are people that are paying really good money for it. For, yeah, a container about this size for... Oh, I don't know, anywhere between seven to nine dollars. And I'll tell you, uh, you can make it for a lot less than that. Um, I still got the chicken in the fridge because I keep that in there until the last minute. I've got the rest of it on the counter here. Now, this is really for show the cheeses uh, because I already chopped them up and mixed them and I've got them in a bowl here. The reason I'm showing you is I've got a big chunk of Asiago here that I just cut a piece off and chop it up fine with a knife. You can buy it uh, shredded, but it's just a lot cheaper this way. And there is a bit of outlay for the cheeses at the beginning. If you don't want to use a cheese mix like I do, you can just stick to straight Parmesan and it will work. Um, I've got some Asiago, uh, Asiago Grana Padano, and I have this because I couldn't get Romano. They were sold out of the store and I just wanted to shoot the recipe. Plus, I've got some penne here. I got used a good quality Italian some pepper and um, butter and flour for the roux and I'm using milk instead of cream. Now, one of the reasons for this is the cheeses are fairly high fat content and I am using a roux to make the base for the sauce so you don't really need heavy cream. Uh, the fat content does even out when you do it this way you get a much lighter uh, sauce that's not as fattening. I mean if you, can, you can't really call this slimming food, okay? <laughs> But it's still better for you than using heavy cream. Here's the recipe for the full-sized pan, um, which you can either keep in the fridge for a couple of days and heat up in the microwave, or you can take this and freeze it in smaller containers similar to the ones that you find at the store. Because you're putting this dish together, you can cook it in stages, which is great. I got the water ready to go. Now, one thing you should know about making dishes with pasta in advance. Pay attention to the box and whatever it says for al dente, cook it a minute less and you can't go wrong. This one says 11 minutes, so I'm going to cook it for 10. I got two chicken breasts here. Uh, this one I cut halfway through down the back successfully. It makes like a heart shape. This one didn't, but oh well. Uh, so I'll pop these in a pan that's heating up right now. Now I got a, um, a stone one. So I'm not putting any grease in it. You can see it's starting to get a bit cooked around the edges, so I'm just going to give it a flip. Now I moved them around in the pan a little so you can see what I'm getting at here. If you look at the side of this piece, you can see that there's white at the top and white at the bottom and pink in the middle. So this sort of acts like, um, you know, a test strip, if you will, to see how cooked it is. And if it's still pink, there's no point in fussing with it, just let it go. Now you will notice at the top it is a little pink in the middle, so I'm definitely going to flip this at least once more. Another way you can test for doneness is just use your tongues. When it doesn't move back at you at all, you're likely quite good, and I'd still cook it a few minutes more just to be on the safe side. We are at the prescribed time, and guess what? They're not done yet. Because uh, there's another factor you have to take into consideration is altitude. I The time on the box is given for people that are at sea level. Um, I'm at approximately 3,000 feet above sea level, and what that means is that I have to cook my pasta longer than you do. Um, so I will actually eyeball it until it looks done, because these look like hard little granules here. Here we are a few minutes later, and as you can see, they're not dry looking anymore, and they've increased in size somewhat. And I did taste one, and they're just, just on the underdone side, so I'll take them out now. So I'm just going to let them drain in the sink here and not rinse them off because I don't want to rinse off the surface starch. And if anybody was wondering about the scientific explanation, it's quite simple. Pressure cookers cook at extremely high pressures and 
cook ingredients in a very short time. So the reverse is also true that um, at a high altitude you have less pressure uh, so things take longer to cook. And with that thought in mind, check on the chicken time. Now, this piece is pretty much done. This one is just a little underdone. So what I'm going to do is I'll turn the heat off for now. I'm going to transfer my cutting board, chop them up, throw them back in, and just round them out so they kind of brown a bit on all sides. Come back from this side and cut this one right down the middle. And as you can see, yes, it's a little pink, so it's definitely going back in the pan. Even though it's going in the oven, I want to make sure that everything is cooked. Because, quite honestly, if everything is pre-cooked, the chicken's cooked, the pasta's cooked, the sauce is cooked, then what you're really doing in the oven is just heating things up. Now, that said, um, this dish will keep cooked in the fridge for about three days. I wouldn't even stretch it that long, do a couple. If you are planning to freeze it, the sauce may come out a bit grainy when you defrost it. And also, if you're going to do that, you should always make sure that you use fresh chicken breasts instead of previously frozen. Just pop it back in the pan for a couple of minutes. So remember at this stage, all you're interested in doing is just cooking the pink out. So take a look at them, flip them over piece by piece if you have to, to just get an idea. But do not cook this dry. This is looking pretty good right now, so I'm just going to turn the heat off and take it off the heat. This makes best in a non-stick pan. That said, if you're going to do that, either use a wooden spoon or get yourself a nice, I don't even know what this is, plastic silicone. It's not metal, okay? Because if you use metal in the bottom, you're just going to scratch up your pan for nothing. And what I've done is I'll just turn it back on. Oops. A little over medium. Get your butter. And I do measure this. Uh, usually you'll know I don't measure much, but the roux I always measure quite as accurately as I can because if your proportions are out, your sauce will not turn out. Keep that in mind. If you're not used to sauce making, you're best to approach this slowly than aggressively. Because if you burn your butter right now, your sauce will not come out. So you want to be very gentle with it at this stage. While the butter is melting, get the rest of your ingredients close at hand. Because when it's showtime for this, you don't want to be hunting around the kitchen for the flour or the milk or the cheese or the pepper. Well, you can hunt for the pepper at the end because it has to simmer a bit. Now, unless you want too much excitement in your life, as soon as the butter melts, get your flour and toss it in all at once. And gently, gently gather the flour and the butter together. And the reason I say gently is because this has got a spring on it and if you go at it too wildly um, <laughs> it can like fly out of the pan which A makes a mess and throws the proportions B of your sauce right out the window and you might as well just start again if you lose too much you may also have noticed that I'm using three and a half cups of milk which is a little unusual for me because I always round things up or down makes life measuring a lot easier but for this one I did try some variations nope it only comes out just just right at three and a half so if you do want to make a half recipe of this and not make quite so much go ahead because uh, you can use this sauce in basically any dish that needs alfredo because uh, it makes like four cups of sauce pretty much so just get your calculator out there and cut everything in half. If you are going to do that though, get yourself a smaller saucepan because chasing around two cups of milk in something this large does not usually have good results. And when is the roux done, you ask? Well, there's three factors to remember. A, it has not turned brown. B, 
um, it's making little bubbles here and see it smells wonderful it's got that warm toasty kind of cookies out of the oven smell and when you hit that point you're free to put your milk in now do not add it all at once it may get a little sloppy on the counter so I tend to put the cup like right over the pan put in some you will notice this will thicken up nearly immediately when it thickens like that add some more again this is not exact and remember the first bit don't press down on the whisk too much or now your sauce will fly all over the stove how do I know that because I've done it now you can keep stirring try to now this is a balancing act at this point you can try to stir the lumps out but the time it's going to take you to do that the sauce will thicken up excessively so you just have to practice and until you get it right you should get in the habit of giving your dishes away you'll have very happy people and you won't eat all of it which is not really good for you this is great once in a while but not all the time now you can see now that there are what appear to be a few stubborn lumps you have to take my word for this these will come out with cooking if you have guests that are sauce purists feel free to pass it through a sieve when you're done before you add the cheese but I really don't think it's necessary and we safely have all the milk in with no splashing if I had an applause track I'd clap right now but as you may have noticed life comes without music before that thickens up this is when you want to start adding your cheese and I will give you a look at it here because the Asiago, you can see chunks of it there. I did not use a cheese grater. Um, I did sharpen my knife today. So it chopped up quite nicely. I'd say just put that in in about half, half now, half in a bit. Just eyeball it, don't worry about it. And as I said at the beginning, if you don't want to spend money on fancy cheeses, you can get away quite easily with using one cup of parmesan and not even the fancy shredded stuff you can just get away with the powder but I would if you're going to use the cheese powder one use a, use a pretty good quality because it's not that much more than the shelf stuff get it out of the deli you'll notice I've stayed with this the whole time if you want a good sauce no this is one thing you cannot walk away from and you'll be happy you didn't now I will zoom a bit so you can see what you're looking at here is not flour if you can see any chunks going by that appear a little yellowish that's the Asiago that hasn't melted yet and like the bits of flour I don't have to wait for it to melt completely before I put in the rest of the cheese and I did run away and get the pepper because I'd rather do it now than right at the end I think it's about ready um, now depending on what thick you like your sauce you could let it cook some more you can see as I whisk it around the back how thick it's getting you can allow yourself a few bubbles to come up to the surface while you're doing this do not let this come to a full boil if you do your sauce will break and what that means is the fat and the water components will separate and you will get a clumpy mess okay I can see bubbles coming so it's time to add the pepper 
and then you can see how thick it really is. How much pepper again to taste. I just sort of cover the stir the surface and then stir it in. This obviously does not require any salt because of the salt content of the cheeses. If you must salt your food, do it at table or else you can wreck the whole recipe. There. Okay. So now it's a simple matter of assembly. And I'm going to do that right back in our pan. Pasta or chicken first does not matter. Drop that in. This will have drained enough at this point that you can bring the whole thing over. I don't advise dumping it all in because it may go all over the floor. So you can toss that briefly. Sauce type for this. After all this work, I always use a ladle. Again, because I just don't want to spill it. And you'll see when I pour it in. That did get quite creamy. I personally don't care if it's slightly lumpy because it's going into pasta. One thing you may have noticed is there's not a lot of fat floating around the top. That's the advantage of using whole milk. And the balance of cheeses is you just hit that right flavor without it being too, too greasy or overpowering. Now one thing to notice, it does thicken up pretty quick. This is what I've scraped out of the pan. And you can see it's nearly solid. So again, don't worry about overcooking it because it'll thicken up really nicely. And the final stage, I always mix it up in the pot. If you try to mix it up in the pan you're going to cook it in, it's just going to go everywhere. I probably could pour this now, but I'll wait till it's down to the end. Okay, so I'll turn that so you get a better shot. Yeah, and a 9 by 13 which this is, is guess what? About the size of the four of those little dinners at the store. So if you did the average at $8, this is over $30 of food um, at the grocery store prepared for you with questionable ingredients. I mean at least when I say questionable you don't know what kind of oil they're using and I don't think they're using butter and whole milk. That's all I'll have to say about it. Um, plus the added fact if you think about it the cheese might be a bit expensive up front but there is no way that with two chicken breasts, pasta and some parmesan if you just want to stick to that is this going to cost $32 to make. It just won't okay so buy yourself a pan get yourself some cheese and give this a shot I'm gonna just cover this up and pop them in the fridge uh, it won't look any different really except maybe a little brown when I bake it so I'll leave that for later for me because I might just pop some of this out into a bowl or something because it microwaves extremely well too eh? uh, so anyways Thanks for watching. I do hope you try this and hope to see you again. Bye-bye.